The navigation system is divided into three main groups. Air data and inertial reference system, ADIRS, plus standby instruments. Radio navigation, additional navigation systems. There are several subsystems within each group. The first group includes Air Data Inertial Reference Units, ADIRU, Global Positioning System, GPS, Standby Instruments. Let's concentrate on the Radio Navigation Group. The Radio Navigation Group includes Radio Navigation Aids, Radio Altimeters, Digital Distance and Radio Magnetic Indicator, DDRMI. The additional navigation systems include Ground Proximity Warning System, GPWS, or Enhanced Ground Proximity Warning System, EGPWS, ATC Transponders, Weather Radar. This completes the introduction to the subjects that will be covered in the following modules. The purpose of the Air Data Inertial Reference System ADIRS is to provide air data and inertial information to the EFIS system, the FMGC and other users. The A320 is equipped with three separate but identical air data inertial reference units. Each ADRU combines an Air Data Reference Computer, or ADR, and a Laser Gyro Inertial Reference System, or IR. The ADR and IR systems of each ADRU operate independently, and failure of one system will not cause failure of the other. The ADR part receives information from aircraft probes and sensors. The ADR part provides various items of air data to the Flight Management and Guidance Computers, FMGC, and other users. The air data provided includes MAC, airspeed, temperature, overspeed warnings, barometric altitude, and angle of attack. The IR part provides inertial data to the FMGC, EFIS and other users. The inertial data provided includes track, heading, acceleration, flight path vector, aircraft position, ground speed and attitude. The three ADIRS are controlled through the ADIRS panel located on the overhead panel. They are initialized through the two MCDUs located on the pedestal and by two of the switches on the switching panel located at the front of the pedestal. Independent data is supplied by each ADRU. Let's see an example of this. In the EFIS system, ADRU1 supplies the captain's EFIS and ADRU2 supplies the first officer's EFIS. ADRU3 is available as a backup to either EFIS system via the switching panel. Use of the switching panel will be covered in the abnormal section. Now let's look at the ADIRS control display unit. The panel is divided into two parts, the upper section for the IR and the lower section for the ADR. The three rotary mode selectors have control over both the IR and the ADR. The controls and indicators for the individual AD rules are grouped and arranged in the following order 1, 3 and 2. Each AD rule has an associated IRS rotary mode selector. In the off position the AD rule is not energized so ADR and IR data is not available. In the navigation position, the ADRs are energized. The navigation position is the normal mode of operation and full inertial data is provided to the aircraft systems. 
The on bat light illuminates to inform the crew that the ADRU system is being powered by aircraft batteries only. The light also illuminates for a few seconds at the beginning of a full alignment as a test of the battery circuit. We will discuss this further in the normal and abnormal operation modules. Each inertial reference unit has an associated indicator. The align light illuminates steady white when the respective IRU is operating normally in align sequence mode. The align light flashes white if there is an IRU alignment fault, no present position entry has been made after 10 minutes, the difference between the position at shutdown and the entered position exceeds one degree of latitude or longitude. Present position information for ADIA's alignment is normally entered via the init page of the MCDU. This method will be explained in the normal operation module. The type of information displayed is selected with the data selector. The system selector enables the crew to switch the display off or select one of the three AD rules for display. We select system 3 for you. Notice that the display now contains the present position or PPOS information for AD RU3. The wind position indicates the true wind direction and wind speed. The heading position indicates the true heading. With heading selected during IRS alignment, the time remaining until alignment is complete is displayed. This is shown by a TTN, Time to Navigation, indication. The duration is approximately 10 minutes, but it can increase with the aircraft latitude. The status position displays IRU status and guidance to the pilot in abnormal situations. For example, the current display is showing Enter PPOS, asking you to enter the present position of the aircraft. The track and ground speed position indicates the true track and ground speed of the aircraft. The spring-loaded test position tests the lights on the keyboard and produces a test pattern in the main display, as shown. The keyboard is a standby facility, allowing, for example, entry of present position for alignment of the IRS. You will see an example of the keyboard use in the abnormal operation. The following items can also be used in case of given failures. The at position of the ADS selectors allows the selection of this IR mode, providing only heading and attitude information in case of loss of navigation capability. The three ADR switches normally remain on, but they can be selected off in response to ECAM procedures. When done, it only stops the ADRs, not the IRs. We will discuss these in the abnormal operation modules. The radio navigation aids enable the crew to navigate and monitor the position of the aircraft. The A320 family is equipped with two VORs, two DMEs, two ILSs, two ADFs. The FMGCs can automatically tune the VORs, DMEs and ILSs for position updating and display purposes. Note the ADFs are auto-tuned by the FMGCs only in specific circumstances. The radio navigation itself is controlled by both FMGCs and can be monitored through MCDU pages. Via the radio navigation page Either MCDU enables the crew to manually tune a specific nav aid, including both ADFs. FMGC auto tuning continues normally in the background. 
Note that when an ILS approach is selected, ILS-1 is displayed on PFD-1 and ND-2, ILS-2 is displayed on PFD-2 and ND-1. As you have seen in the EFIS chapter, the mode selector enables the pilot to select different ND modes to display flight plan and nav aids data. Plan mode is recommended when entering and checking the flight plan. However, notice that nav aid data cannot be displayed in this mode. In all the other modes, ROSE ILS, ROSE VOR, ROSE Navigation and ARC modes, the nav aids can be displayed provided the ADF VOR selectors have been switched to VOR or ADF position. Here, as an example, the ROWS VOR mode with ADF-1 and VOR-2 selected. ADFs are shown as green pointers. Here, ADF-1. VORs are white pointers. In this example, VOR-2. Note also that the Receiver-1 data is displayed on the left side of the ND and the Receiver-2 data on the right side. The associated nav aid data is displayed at the bottom of the ND in their respective colors and sides. We will see the different ND modes and nav aid tuning in more detail in the normal operation module. In the unlikely event of a double FMGC failure, the backup tuning mode provides radio navigation redundancy to the crew. The backup tuning mode is accessed via the radio management panels RMP. Note, RMP3 has no backup tuning capability. For NAVAID tuning, RMP1 standby navigation keys are associated with VOR DME1 and ADF1, while RMP2 keys are associated with VOR DME2 and ADF2. The ILS keys are slightly different. The ILS frequency tuned on either RMP is sent to both ILSs. To access the backup tuning mode, the navigation key has to be pressed. When the backup tuning mode is selected, i.e. navigation key illuminated, the control of the associated receivers is transferred to the RMP and the NAVAID tuning capability of both FMGCs is lost. This is indicated on the MCDU by a change on the radio navigation page which now shows only the titles. To return the control to the FMGC the navigation key has to be pressed again. In backup tuning mode, the selection of one of the standby navigation keys enables the crew to tune the associated nav aid. We will see how to operate them in the abnormal operation module. We will now study the digital distance and radio magnetic indicator, DDRMI. The DDRMI is fitted on the main panel. The DDRMI displays ADF, VOR and DME raw data and combines a traditional RMI and bearing pointer presentation. Two bearing pointers are provided, each with a different distinguishable shape. Each can display either VOR or ADF information. Each pointer has an associated control knob. The left knob selects either VOR1 or ADF1. The right knob selects VOR2 or ADF2. Here, VOR1 and VOR2 are selected. The compass card displays the bearing as supplied by ADRU1. The counters indicate the DME distance. 
However, the window will display only dashes if an ADF is selected. Here, ADF2 is selected. The A320 family is equipped with standby instruments which include a standby airspeed indicator, ASI, a standby altimeter, a standby horizon. Moreover, a standby compass is fitted on top of the windshield center post in a closed compartment. It may be pulled down for use. A deviation card is fitted above the compass. We will now have a closer look at the other instruments. The ASI is fitted with an airspeed pointer and airspeed bugs. The only pilot input to the ASI is the manual setting of the speed bugs. The standby altimeter is fitted with an altitude pointer, an altitude counter, a baroset counter which displays pressure setting in inches of hectograms or in hectopascals depending on the option chosen, a baroset knob. The standby horizon is erected by pulling the caging knob. The standby horizon is the only standby instrument requiring an electrical supply. In the event of total electrical failure, it continues working for approximately five minutes. In case of instrument or power supply failure, a failure flag appears.